one thing I wanted to point out that is really important for when someone is writing a buddy statement is you need to be clear about how you know the veteran, how long you've known the veteran, and who you are. What is your relationship with them? I'm sure you've seen Shelly in, sometimes you'll come across files where there'll be a statement, it's signed, it just briefly states, you know, Mr. Smith is is in a lot of pain. I, I see him, you know, um, having trouble like getting up and down stairs, which is great. I mean, that's good information to have, but that tells us nothing about how the person writing it knows Mr. Smith or um, how much credibility should we give their statement? How much, right. not credibility, but how much weight? Mm -hmm. You know, someone who's known the veteran for 25 years, uh, a spouse who's lived in the same house, is going to go a lot further than someone who the veteran was a childhood friend with, um, but maybe he doesn't talk to you about once or twice a year. Right. Yeah, I agree with you, Rachel. That's really important to actually establish the relationship that the buddy or the writer of the statement actually has with the veteran. And like Rachel said, if any, um, the more length of time that they've known the veteran or closely they've lived with them or worked with them, um, this definitely going to um, give the statement more weight when the VA is processing their claim. Um, I also just had an idea pop into my head about, um, you know, using statements as a means um, for an individual that may be filing for individual unemployability with mm -hmm. coworkers or supervisors and that nature. And you know, same thing that you were saying, uh, I, the supervisor and the veteran has been working with me for three years. And here's what I've noticed as far as absenteeism or needing to take breaks or whatever it may be to establish the relationship and then document, you know, whatever it is that this person is seeing that is not necessarily documented in the file. And I, you know, it's always the case where we'll say one thing and then we're like, but wait, but wait, there's actually an exception, but that's attorney. So what are you going to do? <laughs> um, you know, we've been talking about how it's important for someone. It, it, it gives a lot of weight. If you've known the veteran on a long-term basis, you, you're familiar with them day to day, but there's also a use for statements. Even if you're not in regular touch with the veteran, if you used to be. Mm -hmm. So for example, say we're looking at a period of um, 15 years where there's no medical records. A lot of times that happens, medical records are old, they get destroyed. Right. How do we fill up that information? VA is looking at the absence of information and just saying, well, there's no evidence this happened. You can get a statement from someone, maybe an old neighbor, um, an old coworker, just like you said, that may be able to fill in gaps about that specific time period that VA is looking for. So it it, you really just have to think about what you need this statement for and what it needs to cover um, before applying any of these as like a hard and fast rule. Right. It is like a case by case basis exactly. because you really have to figure out, okay, what are we missing mm -hmm. and who could help us fill in these blanks? Another um, example, Rachel, would be like if your unit, um, something happened with your unit when you were in service that's been maybe years or, or decades ago and it's not in the service records and we, you could research who was in your unit, you mm -hmm. could look up um, and try to reach out to some of these individuals that you may not even know. Um, but, you know, the credibility there is going to be that they were part of this unit. We can prove that. And then they're going to give a statement saying, corroborating and saying this event that you're talking about happened in your unit did happen and they were there and they witnessed it as well. So yeah. I agree that it doesn't necessarily have to be someone that you have a long-standing relationship with. That's a great point. Like, just depends, right? Yeah, yeah it, it really just depends on your case. And <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I find that um, even, even the veteran did, did know each other personally, like they're usually very happy to, to give statements so true. Like, to help their, their fellow service members. Yeah, that's yeah. very true. So one thing that we need to get into that's or cover that's very important, uh, maybe the most important thing is sign and date your statement. And... Don't necessarily do that on just a, a, a regular piece of paper. The VA is very form driven. So there's a specific form that you can use to submit buddy statements, which is. That is now VA form 10 to 10. Yep. And that has changed from what was VA form 4138, which we all used for a really long time. Mm -hmm. So we're changing to the new form now. It's the same it's the same form. It's just a different number. <laughs> yes. But you need to use the new number. 
Yes, new number, <laughs> 10 to 10. And that's available on VIA's website. Um, and that's also something that's important with the form is it contains a little statement um, near the signature page. And it says, I certify that everything in this statement is you know, true to the best of my knowledge. Paraphrasing a little bit, right? right? Um, essentially, you if you don't have that form, um, there's not that attestation on it. There's always, the VA is always going to have some questions of, um, of the veracity of that statement. So it's, it's important to use the form. Um, and if you're not able to get it for whatever reason, you definitely need to know everything in, I, I certify everything in this statement is true to my knowledge. Yeah. 